Uh, my mother is an English Christian. My father is uh, from Pakistan. He's a Muslim. When they got married, uh, my father forced my mother to become a Muslim. But in response to this, she prayed that one of her sons would become a Christian. So I always start my testimony there because I really believe that God answered that prayer, you see. Whilst growing up, my father always made sure he took us out of primary school, especially at Easter time and Christmas time, because he didn't want us to hear the messages connected with these events, you see. In uh, secondary school, I made a cross in metal workshop, painted it silver, kept it in my handkerchief. If you would ask me why I did this, I have no idea why I did it. And then the other recollection I have um, of Christianity was that uh, they gave us, uh, the school gave us uh, a small little New Testament, a Gideon New Testament. I didn't read it, but I just simply carved a cross on the front of it and I kept it in my bedroom. Now, a couple of years later, that became an issue because my parents wanted to emigrate to Canada mm. and uh, my father was going through my things to see what I could take with me. And he came across this little Bible, you see, and he became very angry and I saw fear in his eyes, and I wondered why. So he asked me where I got this little New Testament, and I said, well, they gave it to us at school, and he told me to throw it away. So I said, no, I want to take that with me to Canada, and he was very angry, and I saw a lot of fear in his eyes, and it's ironic because his fear and his anger became the trigger for my search into Christianity. And when we came over here, I began meeting Christians. Um, I had got into trouble in England, and for the first time in my life, I looked upwards towards God, and I asked him to get me out of trouble. <laughs> and I did get out of trouble, and to thank the God, I uh, began saying the Lord's Prayer as they taught us in school. And when I came over here, I began meeting Christians. Now, this was when I was 15 years old in the 1970s. And in those days, the Christians used to wear badges yeah. with I found it. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, Campus Crusade. Okay, all right, I didn't know that. Yeah. But um, I think the idea was that unsuspecting people yeah. would ask these Christians what they found right. and they would come scooting over <laughs> and share the gospel. So. Uh, the Christian shared with me that I could have a personal relationship with God through Jesus. Now, when I heard that, I was shocked because as a Muslim, I was always taught that Allah is unique and distant. He has no associates, he has no partners. And there's no assurance that, that you go to heaven. If in the you're main, Muslim. in the main, no, no. Only Allah knows. Exactly. I've had many cabs tell me that. Yes, exactly. He's the one that decides who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. So um, when they shared the message of Jesus with me, I rejected it because I could not believe that somebody could have a personal relationship with God through Jesus. I mean, you couldn't even, you know, have a very distant relationship with Allah, never mind a relationship, never mind a personal relationship. So I rejected it. And uh, my brother and I applied um, to a, uh, like a government-sponsored farming program. We were accepted along with about 40 others. And uh, This is where you met the young lady. Yes, yes, exactly. A part of the requirement of this program was that we were supposed to go to this farming uh, weekend. It was a weekend seminar <laughs> to teach us a thing or two about farming so that we would be helpful to our farmers. It was a summer program, so we were to live on the farms for the summer. And at this um, weekend farming uh, seminar, I met this very zealous lady. She was, I mean, she was very zealous for the Lord. And she shared the gospel with me, and I said, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, I cannot believe that. And uh, she kept on sharing, even during the lessons. And I said, at one point, I said, we're not going to learn much about our lessons. But she didn't take a blind bit of notice, but simply <laughs> carried on sharing with me the gospel. Uh, so it got to a point where she said, all right. She said, I'm going to prove to you that my God is a real God. Now, I don't say that. And I would have to say I was intrigued by what she said. So I said to her, I said, how are you going to do this? And she said, well, 
I'm going to demonstrate for you an answer prayer based on my personal relationship with God. So I said, um, what prayer? And she said, I'm going to pray that you go on a farm where they're all born again Christians. <laughs> and she actually said this. She said, and where you get the gospel rammed down your throat for two <laughs> solid months. I, I immediately said... I love said, this part of the story. Yeah. I immediately said to her, I said, Allah is not going to answer that prayer. I was angry uh -huh. because I said to her, I said, I said, it, we do not tell Allah what to do. He tells us what to do. It's <laughs> right. the other way around. Right. So she said, I believe that God will answer that prayer. And we were arguing all the way until we left this, the, the seminar. So I went home and I packed a little suitcase. My father dropped me off at this farm. I went to the door. I knocked on the door and this tall, thin Dutch Canadian gentleman named Jerry, a lovely man, um, who answered the door. He was just about to introduce himself when I noticed behind him uh, what I thought was a painting of Jesus because the man in the painting had a, a halo on his head. So as he was just about to introduce himself, I said, hold it. I said, is that a painting of Jesus behind you? And he said, yes. My heart began to beat a little faster. And so I said, are you a, a Christian full of light or something? And he said, I'm a born again Christian. So I said, do you have uh, a family? <laughs> and uh, he said, I have a wife and three daughters. Oh, this is great. And I said, is your wife born again? And he said, yes. And I said, daughter number one. And he said, she's a born again Christian. I said, daughter number two. And he said, she's a born again Christian. And then he said, and then I said, don't tell me daughter number three is a born again Christian. And he said, we're all born again Christians in this house. And I mean, I cannot, you know, I was overwhelmed. It's hard to explain how I felt because I was overwhelmed. I was humbled. And at the same time, I couldn't work out how this young 16 year old girl could pray to Allah and Allah answer a prayer. I'd never, I'd never heard of this before in Islam. So the net effect of this was that it opened my heart to what Jerry had to share with me, the message that he had, the message that he believed, the message that he lived. And um, I think over the course of the summer, he won me over by two things. First of all, his love. He had a love which I'd never seen in Islam before. Yeah. It was gentle, it was patient, he was forgiving, he was kind. And over the course of the summer, his love, the love of the Lord just shined through his heart, through his eyes, through his speech, through his behavior. It was wonderful. Um, I can honestly say that he's a lovely man, an absolutely lovely man. Is he still alive? Now? He's still alive. I just saw him a week ago. He lives in Dunville. How wonderful. Uh, uh, a lovely man named Gerald Brosema. I regard him as my spiritual father in the faith. And then um, I think he also won me over by his consistency. Yeah. He practiced what he preached. He was what we call the genuine article in England. He um, was consistent. You know, he was almost a walking example of scripture, you know, a living example of the word. He really was, he really, he was, to put it in, uh, in, what, in, in terms of what James says, he was a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. You know, I told my wife about your story. I was so impressed mm. by it. And it reminds me how we have to be a witness. Yes. But I want to talk about what really bothers me is that it seems like too many Christians uh, don't show love toward Muslims. And they, mm. they, they mis-caricature many Muslims. Yes. As yes. we know, the jihadist element is a, is mm. a small sliver. Mm. T tell us how to witness to Muslims and love them? Yeah, I mean, my mind goes to Matthew chapter 9 where Jesus saw the crowds and he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Um, I think I, I would suggest that we first of all need to see the way that Jesus sees, that they are harassed and helpless. Um, they may fear God, uh, they may worship God, they may be completely devoted to God, but the, the huge difference is, is they, they do not know God personally. They do not have Jesus. And that, it, that makes all the difference in the world. So I would say, first of all, for us to see the way that Jesus sees, 
that he sees a people that he loves. Um, in the Old Testament, we see that God had compassion upon a brutal people called the Assyrians. That's right. And yet Jonah was commissioned to go to them. That's true. Um, and now, in days gone by, missionaries have gone to uh, Asian countries and African countries, but now Muslims are here. And we have, we, we, we have a harvest. We can actually have a harvest if we see the way that Jesus sees, if we have compassion the way that Jesus has compassion. Uh, and if we pray for them um, the way that Jesus wants us to pray for them, and if we take part in that harvest that the Lord wants amongst Muslims. <laughs> 